Good morning, folks. The sun-diving comet plunged to its end early this morning. Brightness sprouted wings on approach, but unfortunately for those wanting a big show, it was due to a breakup beginning around one million miles out, and the rock vaporized to extinction by the time of impact. In what everyone except EU enthusiasts will ignore, the departing sunspots and filament structures destabilized and snapped when the comet entered the area. Looking forward, we're going to have an enormous filament. Look at her crest the limb now. It's huge. Coming to space weather news, we see a small but relatively larger flare at the time of comet impact, but lower X-ray flux remains in general due to underperforming sunspots. We've got magnetic complexity with beta gamma down south facing Earth, almost delta with positive and negative interacting. The big one coming in has negative surface area behind it, but no negative umbras, and bipolarity exists up here, but thus far they are remaining silent as well. Looking to the other space weather, we had a gamma burst yesterday, and the solar wind sees stability if nothing else. Earth's magnetic shield doing alright this morning. Well folks, today we see the coronal hole depart. The watch technically began going down slowly yesterday, but doesn't plunge until the coronal hole departs. One last pop from Earth's crust before the earthquake factor headed out of view. Top story of the day is a star water moment. Cassini has discovered that Enceladus's underground oceans are indeed global, a water world frozen. Next, you're looking at topographical color overlays on the moon where a fault scarp can be seen. NASA's latest animation explains how Earth is squeezing and cracking our celestial wingman. Climate folks, it has been a slow news year with El Nino dominating everything, but now we have yet further proof that the North Atlantic Oscillation is driven by the solar cycle with a tiny delay. FYI, not accounting for that delay is one of the primary causes of previously flawed studies claiming the sun did not force our climate. Still watching the slow movement of the West Pacific system. We've likely got tropical storm formation taking place right here in the Atlantic. Up in the U.S., we've been seeing horrendous flooding out west, including where more than a dozen people died in a flash flood in Utah where the hills funneled the rain down. Main moisture flow has shifted slightly into the central states today, but in the Midwest, you'll have severe storms tonight. There were multiple reports of tornadoes in England yesterday. The current storm system overhead is a mash of three lows that work the air as one. Eyes open near convergence lines there. Down under, we see the primary low between nations, and yet managing to dump on both of them. In honor of today's top story, the featured members content at suspiciousobservers.org today is the Star Water series. Where is the ice? Why do we call it Star Water? How is it made? And what does it tell us about our universe? Also folks, grab your tickets for observing the frontier. October is the perfect time in Pittsburgh. Consider spending the weekend with us and the frontier of the topics that keep us titillated on a daily basis, October 17th and 18th, Observing the Frontier. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.